Hey, Pristine Posse, welcome back to part two, going to Portugal and making my way back, standby travel edition, all right? Let's pick up exactly where we left off, 1 a.m. in Jersey, all right? So I've already taken that L with TSA because they was trying to play with me. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just protect my peace before I really get annoyed and I go make a dummy mission, change clothes, come back. And y'all be like, no, or just moving in slow motion because she was already moving in slow motion just to get the manager. So I was just like, I don't, I don't have time. Okay. For y'all to be like, oh, there's liquids. Oh, we have to rescan it. No, we're not doing that. So I'm sitting in the airport. It's 1 a.m. I'm in Jersey. I'm not through TSA. So I'm literally sitting on the outside and there are other people sitting on the outside sleeping doing whatever and i'm like uh uh, i don't want to sit here i need a hotel so there was a hotel connected to the airport it was the marriott i called them and as a flight attendant we do get benefits like discounts for staying at different hotels you know because we're flight attendants and they do little deals with us so before i make my way over there i was like let me just call and see i called the marriott I was like, hey, do you guys do discounts for flight attendants? I am in the airport right now. I'd love to get a room. And he was like, yeah, we do. And I was like, okay, great. And he was like, but what airline do you work for? Why does that even matter, sir? Flight attendant, it's not that deep. Like, I need somewhere to stay, come on. I tell him what airline I work for and he tells me, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we only do discounts for United flight attendants, but you can try these other two bum hotels that are not at the airport and i'm like okay thank you so much so i hang up with the phone annoyed but i called the other two recommendations one of them didn't even answer the phone the other one was like they don't have any discounts for flight attendants and it's going to be 250 a night the night's almost over with this one and i gotta check out 11. i'm not paying 250 for 10 hours does that make sense no so i was like oh uh, no i'm not doing all that plus i got an uber there uber back no that's looking like 300 and something dollars no no so at this point i'm well over it and i'm just like you know what we're gonna have to take another charge to the game and sit at the airport yeah sit at the airport and the game plan was all right tsa opens again at 4 a.m I go through and I can go sit in the lounge. In the lounge, they have showers and all that. I can shower there. Always, always bring a washcloth and have your soap, you know, be ready to take a bird bath. So I was, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I had that all together and I was like, all right, just four hours sitting out here in the airport lounge area. And then you can go in, you're just gonna thug it out until the next flight to go to Lisbon, Portugal. That doesn't leave till 6, 48 p.m. So I'm about to spend a day. So I'm just like, girl, it's already been a day, but now I'm gonna have another day in the airport. So already over it. All right, y'all. So while I'm sitting in the airport, I decide to look at the flights from Lisbon, Portugal to Madeira Island, which is where I'm gonna be staying for my birthday trip, right? Now, I looked up all this stuff, you know, back when I had planned the trip. And there were like 15 flights going from Lisbon, Portugal to Madeira, right? Now, why when I go on Google and I look up the flights, there's only three, three options to get to Madeira through TAP Air Portugal. And I was like, okay, I know I'm not tripping. How is there only three? I refreshed the page. It still says three. I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I go on the TAP Portugal actual website to see like, I don't know, Google is tripping. Let me just look on the website itself. Y'all, I go on the website, 12 out of 15 flights flying out of Lisbon to Madeira are sold out. Okay, that's why they weren't even listed on Google because they're sold out. It's not even an option to fly. So I'm sitting here like, why is it sold out? Like, what's tea? What's going on? I mean, the only holiday that's going on is my birthday, but what else? Literally forgot that the world does not revolve around me. And it's not only is it spring break time, 
but the silly rabbit wants to have Easter during my birthday weekend. So Easter Sunday fell on that following Sunday and everybody was traveling to Madeira for Easter during that time. Now, I honestly did think about spring break, but I did not think about Easter considering the fact that Easter does fall. Sometimes it falls in April. I believe last year was in April. So I didn't even cross my mind. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go during the week and I should be good to get there for my birthday. I don't have time for all these extra holidays and extra curriculars and everybody else trying to fly to the same area. Quick side note, if you did not get a chance to wish your girl a happy birthday, you can make it up to me by liking the video, okay? Commenting down below. Make sure you're subscribed to The Pristine Posse and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I post a video, okay? That is the least you can do since you missed my birthday. Now, if you can do that for me, we're good, okay? Thank you. Now, obviously, I do not have time to play, all right, to get to Madeira. So if there's only three flights left, I need to go ahead and just bite the bullet and buy the ticket. So that's exactly what I did, all right? And as a flight attendant, I have not purchased a flight in three years to be exact, all right? And buying tickets, that's never in the budget, so... After I bought that ticket, I was like, girl, I, I don't care what happens. Now you're going to have a good time. You're going to make sure you have a good time because the money's already spent. Period. I don't want to hear no complaining. I don't want to hear nothing. You're, you're going to have a, you're going to make the best, the best out of it. OK, because we don't have time for nothing less after we just purchased a ticket. All right. That so that was my vibe. The rest of the trip, I was like, we don't have time to be sad. No. The money is spent we're going we're gonna have a good time fast forward i did go through tsa all that good stuff got ready was just chilling met some people mind you all of the staff in ewr they were super super sweet i mean tsa airport security um people at restaurants like everyone was so nice so i will give them that okay customer service is 10 out of 10. Super sweet. Now, I did go to the International Terminal to take the TAP Air Portugal flight to go to Portugal, right? That was a standby flight. And when I went up there, she told me immediately, there's space, I'm gonna get you on. Um, I got you checked in, just come back in about an hour before we board and I'll get you a seat. Cool, she got me a seat. Now, I am about to get my boarding pass, but I'm like waiting in line. There's a guy before me, I don't know how their interaction was okay mind you he and i had the same type of like carry-on bag not the same brand but like you know the same size she looks at his bag and she's like oh let me see your bag let me weigh it she weighs and she's like oh it's too heavy she's like your bag is too heavy we're gonna have to check the bag and he was like are you serious like i fly this airline all the time this is not fair da, 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 da. he's going on and on she's like yeah i'm sorry sorry these are the rules now mind you i'm kind of like i don't want to check my bag okay i just want to hurry up and get there this is a no check bag era like i don't want to do that but if i have to then i have to but regardless the guy in front of me he is low-key going off on her like this isn't fair i'm not trying to blame you but da da da, da. she's like yeah i understand sir da, da 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 checks the bag in now one thing about it i just know as a woman my bag is going to be heavier than his okay because i have makeup all that good stuff inside my bag he doesn't so i'm like i already know my bag is gonna be heavier than his anyways he's yapping on having an attitude and such she checks his bag she gets to me she doesn't weigh my bag she doesn't check my bag, nothing. She just gives me my boarding pass. She's like, yeah, you good, girl. And I say all that to say, the reason why she did that with him is because whatever, whatever he was talking about prior, before I walked up, he was doing too much, okay? He was doing too much, he was being rude because even as I was behind him, he was being a little bit rude. But I'm like, once you start being rude and you're just, talking too much, doing too much. Yeah, that's when the gay agent has the opportunity to get real strict with the rules and not lenient at all. And she starts pulling out the scale like, oh, 
weigh your bag, da 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 da, because you're being annoying. So that's why I tell y'all, you need to be nice. Be nice to that gay agent because the power, the power is in the gay agent's hands, the power is in the flight attendant's hands, the power is in all of the staff, okay? One staff can go to the next staff and be like, keep your eye on this one because they were a problem for me. And as a flight attendant, all you gotta do is say the word. I don't care what happened, I'm on I'm on my coworker's side. She don't like you, so now I'm watching you. We're not on good terms, hon. So keep keep the peace. Once you walk into the airport, keep the peace at all times, okay? Your girl finally made it on the flight. First stop is to Lisbon, Portugal. And then here we are, some of the food that they gave us. This is like a mushroom pasta with a cheesecake, salad, and some bread. It was okay. It wasn't bad. Edible, you know. And then I got some wine, y'all. Look at this. It's given mouthwash cup. No, it's given pup cup. It's a pup cup. <laughs> y'all let me know in the comments. What is it giving? And finally, we made it to Madeira Island. So freaking pretty. Isn't it pretty, y'all? Look, it reminds me of Hawaii, but like better. Let me not say better, European vibes. And then here is the airport, y'all. This airport is actually named after uh, Cristiano. Ronaldo, all them episodes of I Am Georgina, and I'm finally here. I made it to Madeira. All right, y'all, be sure to check out my shorts on the YouTube section and also my TikTok for more footage on the Portugal trip. And be sure to like the video and subscribe to the Christine Posse if you are new. Y'all, I had to flip the camera around. I tried to do it with the front camera as long as I could, but doing a video and not seeing my face is insane, all right? Because I'm like, dang, what do I look like? And I feel like I'm dumb close, like, hello? And I don't really like that, but y'all let me know what looked better. I'm pretty sure the front camera looked better, but... If y'all really see a difference when I flip the camera, because the second half is going to be like this. So let me know if y'all see a difference. If not, I'm going to try my best to start recording flipping the camera. Anyways, back to the story time. So finally, I got to Lisbon, Portugal. Boom. Then I got to Madeira Island. Beautiful. All right. And I had a great time. Then it was time to go so it was time to go i didn't even bother looking up flights i was like just enjoy your time we'll figure it out later we'll figure it out later in terms of flying standby if push comes to shove buy a ticket going there when it comes to the way back we gonna stand by it back so i, I don't care what's going on i'm stand buying it back okay because i'm in no rush to get back okay i packed extra food for pepper at kitty camp so he's good and thank god i don't have any children so yeah it's fine as a flight attendant i want to take the shortest way possible honestly i would love a non-stop flight but because i'm in an island and it's not an international um airport i'm gonna have to go to fly somewhere else and then fly to dallas so what I did was I looked up all the flights that are nonstop from Europe to Dallas. Out of that list, London was one of them. So I decided to go from Madeira to London and then London to Dallas, all right? Two flights, I can do three. It starts to feel like work, a lot like work. And I don't like that, all right? I never wanna sit in the airport. I've already done my time at the beginning of this trip, okay? Now going to London, there was a 6 a.m. flight or a 2 p.m. flight. And I'm sure there was probably more, but they were sold out. So I had 6 a.m. or 2 p.m. And your girl did not want to leave at 6 a.m. No. So I was like, 2 p.m. it is. If I don't make the 2 p.m. flight, then I'm going to unfortunately have to take the standby flight to Lisbon, Portugal, and go from Lisbon to EWR, JFK, or Boston, then Boston to Dallas. Whatever. But I was just like, I refuse to be at the airport at 6 a.m. and then spend all day. No. 
enjoying my last brunch here before I take off. A nice healthy hearty meal with mimosa and some fresh passion fruit juice. Y'all, the brunch here was so bomb. And I'm just enjoying the view on the patio. Ugh. I love it here. Such a nice ambiance and a nice view. All right, y'all. So I get to the airport and I book my standby flight with British Airways. There were like multiple airlines with different going different places. The British Airway line was empty. So I'm sitting here like, is the flight canceled or what's tea? Because no one is in this line. I go up to the line, well, not the line, but I go up to the counter and I was like, hey, like I booked a standby trip and they were like, oh, okay. They pull it up. Y'all, the gate agent at the counter gives me a confirmed seat. That's tea. British Airways, y'all got it locked down and all of the airlines need to operate on this level. Just provide me with a confirmed seat at check-in, okay? Especially if you know that the flight is not full. Don't have me anxiety ridden from the time that I wake up all the way until I get to the gate and until everyone has boarded, just, just give me a ticket. So they gave me a ticket, so I was like, okay, great. Now it did take me a while to get all the way to the gate, don't know why, but it was just like a maze. Finally get there, get on the plane. Now it was a three hour flight from Madeira Island to London. Y'all, I was tired. I was knocked out the whole flight. And at the end of the flight, this is what I noticed with basically all European airlines, cause this happened on tap, Portugal Airlines too. You must have the window shade open for takeoff and landing because I had the window seat for both of those flights actually all of my European flights and they kept waking me up. Like the flight attendant would literally wake me up, like put the window shade up. And I thought it was just like for other people to see, but then by the third time I caught on like, oh, this is mandatory. Okay, so the shades have to be up, take off and landing. Besides that, another difference that I noticed is that they don't have ice. Like they have a little, 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 little box of ice compared to like in the US we have an abundance of ice, okay? Because I like all of my beverages cold. Yeah, they didn't really have ice and something else. Oh, the chargers, they will call them sockets, not plugs. And it smelled really good on the plane. And they have this like disinfectant that they spray on the plane, which I love. And it's called, I think it's called Horsley's. Cause I looked it up and I can't even buy it here. Cause I would definitely buy it for my flights. Cause Sometimes when I get on a plane, it smells like a sweaty gym. It smells nasty. And we need to spray some of that because it smelled really good. Anyways, fast forward, we get to London and my flight to Dallas does not leave until 8 a.m. I got to London at 6 p.m. the night before. So I'm already on the hunt for a hotel within the airport because mind you, as flight attendants, we do get deals, right? I go to an area and I was like, hey, I wanna get a hotel for tonight. He was like, yeah, we're sold out. Huh? Yeah, we're sold out because it's the holiday time. And then he was like, but if you want, you could leave here and go to another hotel, but you wanna check to make sure they're not sold out too because it is like, you know, Easter weekend. And I'm like, ugh. Are you serious? Call up two places, they're sold out. I call up another place, they were like, it's 300 for the night. No, not doing that. And it was like 30 minutes away from the airport. Like, no, we're not doing that. Now, I was speaking to one of the airport employees. I was like, hey, do you know any other places that I could like spend the night at? Um, you know, reasonable price with a low airline discount. He was like, girl, they all booked up. Your best bet is to just stay here because you don't want to run into traffic the next day and all that stuff. So I was like, you know what? Okay, so I had to bite the bullet and stay at the airport. Oh my God, a shift at the airport, y'all. A whole shift at London Heathrow. 
which honestly it wasn't too bad because it was clean there they had shops open and there were other people also in the same predicament so we were all kind of like sitting together the only thing that was quite annoying while sitting in the airport is that because i'm out in europe you need a european charger boom i got one right i go to plug it in all right look at it i go to plug it in it's not working and i'm like what is going on with this the people in london were like let me see your charger they were like what is this honey i was like what do you mean this is a european one they said no this is like what you use for like spain portugal you need a uk charger why is there a specific charger for the uk okay i don't have time for that and then i guess the uk one has three um little prongs this one has two i'm like stop stop dead giveaway i'm a tourist not from here because i was so annoyed about that literally had to ask people can i use your charger can i use your charger then i finally found um an area that actually took the two prongs but yeah if you're going to uk make sure you have the charger with three prongs okay also another quick side note they had a little grocery store so i got a c4 look at this this is twisted limeade y'all i got like three because they had a deal. It was like buy two, get one free. I've ne that was never been inside of a store in the airport that was actually cost efficient. This one was cost efficient. And they had um C4 flavors I've never seen. So limeade, twisted limeade, and they had a pineapple. And they were both good. And this is my last one. I'm already done, so. I tried to look on Amazon, it literally says only in the UK, so can't even get it here. Now let me tell y'all really quickly, the flight to London, I booked it, I was number, let's say number seven on the standby list, and there were like 11 people, 41 seats open. So I was like, okay, cool, I got that. I'm gonna have it, I'm gonna have a seat, I'm not even worried. I go to check in, speaking of checking in, Avoid London Heathrow at all costs, okay? Because they play way too much about the liquids. Way too much, all right? You have to put all of your liquids inside of a little plastic bag. And then they're like, it has to be less than 100 ml. I'm American. You know I'm going by ounces. So I'm like, uh, 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 this is too much math, number one. Number two... They're like, you cannot have a full-size toothpaste. What am I literally going to do with a full-size toothpaste? Please tell me. I have a full-size toothpaste and it was brand new. I had too many things that was way over 100 ml. And I'm like, <laughs> 100 milliliters. I had way too many things over that. So I had to check my little small carry-on bag in because I was like, I'm not throwing anything away. Like, no, everything is valuable. Even the toothpaste, so no. Check my bag in. I go through. Steam Posse, please let me know if you've ever been through the London Heathrow Airport. Did you have any trouble getting your liquids through? Did they throw anything away? And let me know any other airports that I should be cautious of that are very strict like that. Let me know down in the comments. And if you're still here with me, drop a pink heart for me, okay? Be sure to like and subscribe. Anyways, so I get through. I get all the way to the gate. Now, it was a weird setup. First of all, they make everyone sit in like the common area and then they don't release the gate number until basically 20 minutes before boarding. All right. Ooh, that's weird. Then once you get to the gate, it's like the standby people have to stand outside and outside of the gate because the gate is like inside of a room. It's like a room and then you go. It, it is so weird, y'all. It's so weird. I was like, uh-uh, I don't like this. Anyways, all the standbys had to stand outside. Now, I noticed that there's more than eight standbys, eight, 11 standbys sitting outside. It's like 20 people. And I'm like, am I tripping? Or I look at the standby list, y'all. Still says like 44 seats available. However, there are 41 people on a standby list. We went from 11 to 40, 41, and then I'm number 38. 
excuse me? How did that happen? How did that happen? So I'm like, uh, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. So they're moving in slow motion. They're like, oh, if you get a seat online, you must wait until we print you out a boarding pass. Some people are like going back and forth with like the gate agents, like, hey, I have one, let me go through. And she's like, you gotta wait. So they have to deal with that. It's like three gate agents on the outside, like basically calling our name up. So I'm patiently waiting. I get my seat, I go through, I'm like, I get seat like 20 C. So I'm like, you know what, I got a seat, I don't care, I'm not complaining, whatever. Get on, I go sit down, and then, y'all, here come Pepper. Let me tell y'all how Pepper woke me up this morning. One day, I'm gonna get the pots and pans. I don't get no sleep because of you. You don't get no sleep because of me. I should do that. I really should, because he was meowing so much for no reason. Anyways, I get on the plane, I go to sit down. The flight attendant comes up to me and he was like, um, so there's a seat in first class, but like the TV isn't working. It doesn't come out all the way. Do you want to get moved up there? And I was like, absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay, I move 20C all the way up to first class, honey. I get up there, I was like, oh, yes, ma'am. Let me get comfortable. And to be clear, it was actually um, American Airlines flagship business class, which is basically tier two right after first class. But baby, them seats lay all the way back into a bed and that's all that matters when i tell y'all i was knocked out the whole flight the only time i got up was to use the restroom and i went back back to sleep and the flight attendants they kept catching me using the restroom they were like oh are you hungry are you hungry you know we, we pass out breakfast we can bring it out i was like girl i'm going back to sleep i will wake you up when i am good and ready and i was not even hungry honestly Sleep comes before eating for me. So I was like, I'll wake up about an hour before the flight and you can just bring all the food out, out all at once, all right? But for right now, I'm getting back in that bed. That's how tired I was. But thank God, thank God I got a seat. Now, really quickly, how did I get a seat in first class and I'm number 38 on the standby list? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is that your girl was not wearing a bonnet, no pajamas, okay? On my best behavior at the gate, all right? Not causing any ruckus, no issues with any of the gate agents, with any of the flight attendants, all right? So I'm trying to tell y'all you need to be on your best behavior because anything could happen. I'm sure they looked at that list. I don't know what was going on with the rest of 38 people. I don't know if they had kids. You're not, you're not gonna bring crying babies up to the front, okay? You're not gonna bring rude passengers up to the front. You're not going to bring, listen, you're, it doesn't matter where you are on a standby list. I'm not, even as a flight attendant, I'm not gonna bring someone who, this might be a heavy hitter for some of y'all. If you smell, I'm not bringing you up to first class, okay? You're not gonna light up all of first class no, you're not gonna do that. And then we have complaints. No, I'm gonna keep you back there and I'm just gonna skip you and go to the next person. So multiple reasons why, but what I can tell you as a flight attendant is that you, and I'm not saying you need to be draped in design or anything like that, no. Just be put together, be polite, be respectful, all right? And you may, you may get bumped up if there's a seat, if there's a seat, all right? Hope you guys enjoyed part two. Chat me up in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye.